North Korea is pushed to brink of war. North Korea now says that planned U.S. South Korean military drills are pushing the peninsula to the brink of war as a U.S. military commander headed to an island devastated by North Korean artillery to show solidarity with South Korea. North Korea's state news agency said drills this weekend involving South Korean forces and a U.S. nuclear-powered supercarrier in waters south of a skirmish Tuesday between the rival Koreas are a reckless plan by trigger happy elements and that the maneuvers target the north. The situation on the Korean peninsula is inching closer to the brink of war. The dispatch from the Korean Central News Agency said the comments came ahead of a planned visit by General Walter Sharp, the U.S. military commander in South Korea, to the island targeted by the North Korean attack. Four South Koreans, two Marines, and two civilians were killed in the hour-long skirmish on Tuesday when North Korea unleashed a hail of artillery on the small island. The South Korean president on Wednesday ordered reinforcements for some 4,000 troops to the island and four other Yellow Sea Islands, as well as top-level weaponry for the soldiers and upgraded rules of engagement that would supposedly create a new category of response when civilian areas are targeted. The South Korean defense minister resigned on Thursday. His resignation was accepted by the president and a replacement will probably be announced very soon, according to a statement on the website of the presidential office. He had offered to resign in May after the sinking of the South Korean warship Chinoan in March, according to the statement. The decision was made in an attempt to restore the discipline of the military in the wake of the latest development, the statement said, and in scenes reminiscent of the Korean War 60 years ago, dazed residents of the island this week have forged through blackened rubble for pieces of their lives and lugged their possessions down eerily deserted streets strewn with bent metal. It was a sea of fire, one resident said Thursday, recalling the flames that rolled through the streets of this island that is home to military bases as well as a fishing community famous for crab. The spit of land had only six pieces of artillery. Tensions with North Korea have risen since the sinking of the warship in March, which killed 46 sailors. The November 23rd shelling of the island, which also wounded 20, is the first of its kind since the 1950-53 Korean War and spurred President Barack Obama to send an aircraft carrier to the Yellow Sea as a show of support and strength. South Korea will revise battle manuals and increase military strength on its maritime border, the presidential office said in a separate statement earlier Thursday after an emergency cabinet meeting. Plans to reduce the number of Marines on the island and four neighboring islands on the western side of the peninsula will be scrapped, according to the statement. The nation has raised its military alert status to the second highest level. The North Korean Army Supreme Command, in a statement issued through the official Korean Central News Agency, accused South Korea of firing first in the November 23rd incident and warned of merciless military attacks if its territory is violated. A spokesman for China's foreign ministry told reporters in Beijing on Thursday but it was evident that North and South Korea disagreed on which side started the clash. The American President, the South Korean President, and Japan's Prime Minister have urged China to use its influence to temper North Korean acts of aggression. China is the regime's main economic and political benefactor. The two countries fought together against United Nations forces during the Korean War. But in reality, there's not much 
any nation can really do. Because, once again, North Korea is a desperate nation. So it seems that they can launch these attacks with impunity. Because, like I say, what is the world going to do about North Korea? And what can they do? Again, these are more signs of the times. The end times. Transition days. Which is a continuing daily process. In other words, what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations? Again, Revelation chapter 16 verse 5. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which are and was and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. 6. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. And thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. 7. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. 8. The fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch humans with fire. 9. And humans were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which has power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. 10. The fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. 11. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And yes, it's time for all prophecy to be fulfilled. And these are more signs happening day by day all around the world.